Hello and welcome back to the Holland Homestead. So today we're going to be planting some flowers that we just picked up at Hornbaker's Gardens in Princeton, Illinois, out into the L bed. So if you haven't been following the channel very long, uh, you may not know what our goals are with the L bed uh, or what it even is. Uh, it's a bed that we created this past spring in the shape of an L uh, that kind of uh, it follows the curvature of the existing bed that we had made and it kind of goes around and creates a little path through it. I'll show you more about it here in just a couple minutes. Um, but our color scheme with the L bed is orange, blue, and white. Uh, and so that's what we've been focusing on with our plantings in the L bed. So let me show you a little bit about the, uh, more about the L bed and then I will show you some more of the plants that we have got to put in here. Okay, so here behind me you can see that we are in the L bed. Off to my left we have these beautiful tithonias, the Mexican sunflowers. Uh, and they're an annual that we grew from seed and they create this nice deep orange color uh, and the hummingbirds love them. Uh, I've seen our other little birds, our finches, uh, perching in them uh, and then other insects have been on them as well. Uh, down, to, down to my left, we have um, some butterfly milkweed, Asclepia tuberosa, which is a nice pale to darker orange color, depending on how mature it is. Uh, it will get to be a little bit taller than this, about two feet tall. And I actually see a monarch caterpillar now on that plant, right to my left foot. Uh, which is the whole reason that we plant milkweed is to benefit monarch butterflies, but it's also very beautiful. Um, so it's very rewarding to see, you know, a monarch butterfly caterpillar uh, feasting on our plants. Uh, and then we have some orange Asiatic daylilies, um, one in each clump um, to accentuate the orange of the uh, Asclepia tuberosa. Uh, then we have some French marigolds that we've grown from seed um, scattered around here. They are, uh, they've created one bloom, now they're starting to bush out. Uh, we have some tall American bellflower, which is a biennial. Uh, it's not flowered this year, but it should flower next year with blue flowers. Uh, and then we have this Salvia guarantica, um, the black and blue sage, uh, black and blue salvia. It is a beautiful flower. I've also seen the hummingbirds enjoying that. Uh, and unfortunately it's an annual. I'd love for it to come back every year. We'll either continue to plant seeds for it, which uh, can be difficult since it is a hybrid, um, or we'll go to our local nursery and pick those up because they do a wonderful job providing a deep blue to this bed. So as you can see, we have a lot of orange um, we're kind of sparse on the blue, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be adding some more blue and white and just a little bit more orange um, into this bed uh, to really help fill it out. And so you can see it's got this nice contour that flows around. Um, and it's a, it's a very large bed that we look to be filling up. Behind everything back here, we have uh, some silky dogwoods, which, which creates some small white flowers, but it's good for creating a little bit of a hedge as well as um, provides excellent winter color and some foraging opportunities for birds with the small berries that it, they produce. So um, let's give you another view of this bed and then we'll get into which plants we have bought um, to start filling it out. So this is coming at the bed from the south. You can see on the corner there we have the Asclepia tuberosa with our tithonias behind them. The path curves and goes around and then towards the back patio. So this is a nice flower bed that we've created that we continue to look to expand into. And this flows up this direction and around accentuating the different areas. So something you want to think about 
with your, any of your border beds is layering and different blooms for different times of the year. So in the front we have our shorter plants that tend to stay under 20 inches. Then we have our middle plants which will go between 2 and 4 feet tall. And then in the back we have our plants that get taller than 4 feet. And this helps to draw the eye through the bed, not make it feel too cluttered, uh, and gives you a nice framework to work off of. And then there's different times of the year. So you want to have things that bloom in the spring, bloom in the summer, and bloom through the fall. Uh, and we're going to be putting some orange tulips in here, white tulips, some daffodils, different things to bring that all year round color through this bed. Okay. So now we've got our plants lined up, uh, varying in color, blue on this end and orange on the other end and white in the middle. So let's start to go over our plants to see what we have to plant in here. So this is hardy plumbago. This is going to give us a nice blue flower uh, as well as create some low ground cover like foliage to help fill in some of those low spaces in the bed. Then. We have a delphinium, we have delphinium grandiflorum, blue butterfly, which is a, a lark spur. This is going to bloom in the summer and will get between 12 and 14 inches. So this is going to be in our front as well. Then we have salvia nemoroso, blue marvel, which is a meadow sage. It will also bloom in the summer and it will get between 10 and 12 inches tall. So you can see our blues are going to be pretty low uh, and help provide a blanket of coverage. Then we have our, this is obedient plant, Phystagia, Phystagia virginiana, which is, this is a native R, crystal peak white. Uh, this will get between uh, 18 to 24 inches so we'll put it closer to the middle uh, and it will also bloom in the summer I'm sorry the height will be 16 inches so that's another good one for our, our white colors I don't always endorse using native ours uh, because it can they cannot have the same positive effect that the native plants can but we're going to give this one a shot. Then we have uh, another salvia. This is salvia bumble snow. It's going to be white. It's going to be a low growing plant. So we'll put that towards the front as well with a bloom time of the summer. Then we have our Shasta daisies. These are Becky. So um, a nice tall white flower. They're going to get between uh, two and th you know three and a half feet tall. Now something to be aware of with Shasta daisies, they are a type of oxide daisy and those can, oxide daisies themselves can be invasive but Shasta daisies are supposed to be less invasive but they always recommend that you deadhead them because some of the seeds may be able to revert to more of their uh, pre-breeding characteristics and become invasive. So make sure you're always deadheading them. Then we have some hybrid uh, oriental lilies. This is Cat Lilium Casablanca. This is going to become uh, 48 inches tall uh, and bloom in the summer, a little bit earlier summer. So this is going to provide some nice white color. Then we have um, an Oriental lily. These are uh, Lilium hybrid lily. Looks tiny crystal. Uh, Asiatic lily. Bloom in the summer. So they have already finished blooming. Uh, they're going to get to be about 16 inches tall. So a medium to low plant. Probably group the three of them with the three that we already have. And then we round it out with two more uh, orange lilies. We have Lily Looks Tiny W, uh, which has a double flowering lily. It's to be about 14 inches tall. 
and Lily looks bloom extension orange which is actually two kinds of lilies together to form different colors 12 to 14 inches also medium to low so those are our plants uh, let's go and get ready to plant them out something you're going to want to make sure that you do before you start taking the shovel to the dirt is to lay out your plants in a general light area of where you want to plant them this will help give you an idea of what things are going to look like when it's all planted out uh, and you know you can move it around now but you're going to have a lot harder time moving those plants once you've put them in the ground you don't want to go back and dig them up so i recommend laying them out getting an idea of what it's going to look like and then bury them in the ground hi alba did you come to help all right now we've got the tools together that we need to help us to plant out these new plants uh, so we're going to get started a couple tips to for your information uh, about planting out plants i'm sure a lot of you have done it you know make sure you dig a hole big enough for each of your plants to go into uh, you don't want to dig too small of a hole uh, you don't necessarily have to break up the roots of each plant as long as they don't look pot bound but if there are circling roots around the bottom i would break them up so they give it a chance to spread out a little bit more uh, i'm not going to show you us planting every single plant here but through the magic of television you'll be able to see the finished product we'll see you in a little bit so as you can see we have a wide range of plants here that have different flower types and different leaf textures that help to create some interest in the garden and to help you know it flow you want to have multiples of each usually so it'll draw the eye through the garden with re repeating patterns uh, and that really helps your border uh, look very well organized and very well done all right the sun is setting on the hole and homestead and the l bed and just in time we finished our project we've got all of our new plants from hornbakers planted out our new whites and blues and a couple little oranges uh, to really accentuate this bed so uh, i look forward to seeing this beauty that this provides going forward to watch these magnificent flowers grow and produce brilliant blooms uh, and i hope you guys learned something today don't forget if you like this video like and subscribe it helps out our channel so much and we really appreciate your support until next time from the Holland Homestead.